Should we not release them and stretch them out to try and counter uh, all of this activity that they're doing? Well, yes and no, okay? So this kind of theory is 50% true because yes, stretching and flexibility is great for any muscle out there. So it's not just for these, it kind of goes for every other muscle, like the quads and the hamstrings or whatever. Uh, you know, making sure that the muscles are released like with self-treatment and stuff like that, that's also very important. But if you miss out on the strength element, then the tissue itself is not going to have optimal movement and, and, and optimal strength. The issue is that they're not really working uh, at 100% uh, like capacity or movement because when you're walking around, you don't really do full plantar flexion and full dorsiflexion. You're just doing like certain degrees of those movements, right? So these muscles could be very durable. They could be very strong in a certain like level, certain amount of movement, but that doesn't mean that they will be strong throughout the entire movement. So you can see it connecting onto the medial aspect of the foot there. So the, the answer to be honest, what we've said previous uh, times before, it creates that dorsiflexion and inversion. So that inversion movement. And what's interesting here is that the, uh, posterior tibialis, which is essentially located behind it here. So if we move to, I select both of these muscles, I don't need actually just the other one. So these together fade everything around. This is what they look like when you've selected them like one uh, together. So they are agonist and antagonist muscles because they're essentially opposites. The anterior tibialis creates dorsiflexion and inversion. The, plan uh, the posterior tibialis creates plantar flexion, but it also creates inversion. So they're kind of 50% uh, agonist antagonist, uh, but at the same time, the other 50%, they're actually helping each other with that uh, in inversion movement. You could potentially be suffering from, you know, tightness of the posterior tibialis, uh, and this tightness could be caused by either, you know, the muscle being overactive but also being underactive so it's not just always about you know the uh, the muscle working too much potentially sometimes it's about the muscle not working as much um, and if you so some of the ways to essentially target that posterior tibialis is to tr essentially try and isolate the plantar flexion movements and the inversion movements but because the anterior tibialis is the antagonist to the posterior tibialis you also want to work on the anterior tibialis uh, when it comes to strength as well Okay, because those two work together, like we said a couple of seconds ago, even though some of the movements that they provide are opposite movements, uh, they are all, they're both working towards creating that inversion movement. Okay, so there is a part of those muscles that is working together. So the logic here is that, you know, if you want to target the muscle that's essentially been affected or the muscle that is the main cause of the condition, then you're not, you're not always working directly on that muscle. You also want to work on its antagonist and the muscle that essentially, you know, is very close to it and is essentially its opposite. Peronis group is also involved in movements that involve the posterior tibialis. Okay, so these muscles need to be working together. And as you can see, like, they kind of, um, you know, complete each other because the anterior tibialis and the posterior tibialis are agonist antagonists when it comes to the flexion, so the dorsi and plantar flexion, but they're actually uh, assist each other when it comes to the inversion. The peroneus group, the longest in the brevis, they are agonist and antagonists when it comes to the in eversion and the inversion, so the inversion and eversion of the ankle but they're actually assisting each other with the posterior tibialis when it comes to plantar flexion, but at the same time being agonist antagonist to the anterior tibialis.